Welcome to Little Steps Big Gains in our series on balance for life. In a previous video, I provided a brief overview of the three sensory systems that integrate together to make up our balance. In this video and follow-up videos, I'm going to break down each system and discuss how it functions, what happens with dysfunction, and what are some interventions for each one. In this video, we're going to start with the somatosensory system. If you find this insightful or educational in any ways, please press that like button below and subscribe for notifications of upcoming videos to come. As a very brief review, our balance is made up of three sensory systems that integrate together to give information to the brain about where we are in space so that it can maintain our balance. Now, these three sensory systems that kind of collaborate together include the somatosensory system, which is input from our limbs, and we're going to talk about that in this video. Alongside that is the vestibular system and the inner ear gives signals to the brain about where we are, especially relative to our head position. And then that visual system, how our eyes give feedback to our brain about where we are in the environment around us. So these three systems integrate, send information to the brain so it can maintain our balance. In this video, we are really going to talk about the somatosensory system because this is a very important system that we have and we need for our balance. So overall, it's a complex system that's collaborating information, sending it to the brain based on a combination of two sources. First is external feedback from tactile input. This is touch, pressure, and vibration, especially at the bottom of our feet and for our limbs. Second is proprioceptive input. This is an internal sensation of our joint position, sense, and motion. When you combine those two, such as if I'm tipping forwards, the pressure in underneath my toes combines with the change in the joint position, ligaments, muscle length, put all of those together and it tells my brain, sends information, you are falling, respond. That is the somatosensory system. So how important is that somatosensory system? Very important. This is because the brain does not rely on all three of those systems equally, but it changes its reliance based on the situation. So for example, when we stand on firm ground with our eyes open, the brain is going to seek 70% of its feedback and information from the somatosensory system alone, 30% from the vestibular system, and only 10% from the visual system. So that somatosensory system is so important. And when the brain is deprived of that information, it will result in postural instability. A few of the many, many causes of impairments in the somatosensory system could include nerve damage, as studies show that individuals with diabetic neuropathy do have an increase in sway, swelling, or pedal edema at the bottom of the feet because now we have this fluid barrier between our feet and the floor, and my individuals will say, I feel like I'm walking on sponges, that they don't quite have that information immobility or immobilization. Studies show that while in a sling or a knee immobilizer, that lack of motor activity can result in a decline in proprioceptive awareness, which is why it's so important to do proprioceptive exercises after braces and slings are removed. Age, age-related changes. There's many reasons for this. One of the big ones is a reduction in what is called plantar receptor density. Plantar receptors are at the bottom of our feet, and they're responsible for instructing the brain in touch, pressure, and 80% of them are dedicated towards vibration, vibration during while we're walking. Now, that plantar receptor density peaks around the age of 40 and declines as we age to the point that by the time we're at the age of 70, we need twice the amount of stimulation to get the same response. So we have that decline in plantar receptor density, which can result in somatosensory deficits or contribute to that. And then range of motion of the ankles. I talked about this in our balance strategies. We need those ankle strategies and we need the range of motion. Studies show essential, especially ankle eversion, to get all of that surface area on the floor. 
Unfortunately, many neurological conditions can contribute to impairments in the somatosensory system. A few examples of this do include multiple sclerosis, where we do have an impairment in the proprioceptive pathways from the body to the brain because of a delay in nerve conduction velocity. So there is a latency in retrieving the balance there. Parkinson's disease, where studies show that there's an increase in threshold for perceiving proprioceptive signals. Parkinson's disease is also associated with somatosensory abnormalities, including joint position sense errors, and then an impaired lower limb tactile and proprioceptive sensation. And for my friends with cerebellar ataxia, this is an example of somatosensory deficits or impairments due to central changes in the brain. Okay, this is because ataxia is a condition that results in damage or degeneration to a part of the brain in back called the cerebellum. The cerebellum in back is responsible for planning and coordinating our movements. Okay, now individuals with ataxia don't necessarily struggle with passive proprioception is what the studies show us. That's our, our sense of a joint position sense statically, okay, passively. However, things change with movement because the cerebellum is responsible for movement. So if I go to reach into a cabinet, the cerebellum and back is responsible for planning ahead of time, planning that movement. Then while I reach, it's responsible for correcting the errors. It's constantly sending signals, correcting my errors to make my reach smooth, okay? However, not just planning and correcting, but also actually predicting our movements along the way. So if we lose cerebellar predictions, we may struggle with perception of our limb position. And this can cause deficits in active instead of passive proprioception. Simple testing or screening for somatosensory deficits include active joint repositioning test. So this is where we have our patient close their eyes, we position one limb and have them try to mimic on the other. Reaching for targets with the eyes closed because now we're really relying on the somatosensory system for that joint position sense. And third, even just standing with the eyes closed because remember 70% of that information should be coming from the somatosensory system and only 10% should be coming from the visual system. So if I close my eyes, there might be a little sway, but there really should be minimal sway. So if an individual is really struggling when I take away their eyes and I clue them, it really shows they're dependent on the eyes and not the somatosensory system and that there are impairments there. In terms of interventions to address somatosensory deficits, there's two approaches. There is that remedial approach. These are techniques or interventions we are going to talk about to try to restore the system. And then there are compensatory strategies. So these are techniques that we can learn to compensate for this weak system, try to navigate around those hurdles. When it comes to remediation, trying to restore the system, we know that we can do this with the aging adult, but what about neurological conditions? The answer is absolutely yes, and I have studies below to support this claim. One of the many studies is called Better Balance with Somatosensory Exercises, a Parkinson's Perspective. And in this article, they are the study, they created somatosensory focused balance training exercises. And if you want to know what those exercises are, check out the appendix of that article below. They have pictures and everything. But that article alone concluded that proprioceptive function in mild to moderate Parkinson's is trainable with somatosensory focused balance training. Another article entitled, How Far Do Patients with Sensory Ataxia Benefit from So-Called Proprioceptive Rehabilitation? In this study, they looked at individuals with multiple sclerosis and diabetic neuropathy, and they found that with foot sensory stimulation, balance, and gait training, there were improvements in dynamic balance and proprioceptive contribution. And for my friends with cerebellar ataxia, I have studies below that do show that high intensity motor training can be effective for individuals with degenerative ataxias, even those with severe disease. You can read those below. These studies show that remedial motor training can enhance remaining cerebellar circuitries 
and plastically induce compensatory networks in the brain. And this is why so many ataxia experts do recommend physical and occupational therapy. So how can we improve the system? Well, first off, remember we need that ankle range of motion. Sounds so simple, but we need surface area on the bottom of our feet. If I'm tipping back and the front of my toes aren't even on the ground, I'm not gonna get that feedback, that somatosensory feedback. I do talk about this in my video on balance strategies that you can see below if you're interested in learning more about the ankles and how important they are in balance. Next is proprioceptive exercises. The proprioceptive system has been shown to be responsive to exercise training, but it does depend on the type of exercises. And this is because the proprioceptive system is challenged more with slow versus fast movements. So a great resource for this is Tai Chi, sitting or standing. Tons of research to support that because of these slow movements really challenge that proprioceptive system somatosensory focused balance training. I do have some resources below. I am Tai Chi certified, but I have more Tai Chi inspired programs to simplify the movements. Another great example is even just weight shifting, slowly shifting the weight back on the heels and forwards on the toes. I do this in an exercise session below, but I always have a balance station around me, including a wall in back or a corner and the chair in front, really practicing proprioceptive exercises. Another treatment intervention is whole body vibration. Now, I personally have not used this modality. However, it was suggested by an ataxia support group members physiotherapist. Therefore, I decided to look into it and I did find three research studies that do support it for ataxia. I included those three studies in the description below. But one study that looked at spinocerebellar ataxia type 1236 concluded that whole body vibration may act on proprioceptive mechanisms and could stimulate non-cerebellar compensatory mechanisms. When pulled by other members, results were mixed, but because of the research, I wanted to include it. Also, one study looked at Frederick's ataxia and found that whole body vibration may be effective for increasing blood flow and activating muscle mass. When it comes to Parkinson's disease, studies on whole body vibration are mixed. Most studies do show favorable results, but not when compared to other active interventions. Something to know before going to buy equipment. A phenomenal exercise to target the plantar receptors at the bottom of the feet that we talk about decline with aging include short foot exercises. This is where we take the toes, pull them in and shorten the foot. What I'll do with patients is I'll put Kleenex on the ground and have them pick up the Kleenex with their toes or with their feet and drop it over here, either in sitting or standing. If you also wanna see this, I include this in the sample balance exercises session below in the description. Another thing you can do is toe spreads, which is so difficult, but it's trying to spread those toes out. And then barefoot exercises, but I do recommend doing this on a safe surface so we don't slip. In therapy, we do what is called sensory re-weighting. And this is where we take away sensory systems to force the body to use remaining ones. So in this case, we will take away the visual and vestibular systems and force the body to rely on the somatosensory system. And this can be done by occluding the vision simply with eyes closed, putting on dark sunglasses. I have goggles with saran wrap on it to distort vision. Walking on a treadmill with a waving curtain in front a twirling umbrella are a few examples of taking away the visual system and forcing the body to use the somatosensory system. A quick tip for other therapists and clinicians is to be aware of the one gram of pressure rule. So studies show that even providing one gram of pressure, such as just laying your hand on a gate belt, can reduce an individual's sway by providing them with proprioceptive feedback. So just something to be aware of, if you're even gently holding a gait belt, providing one gram of pressure, you're already giving them some input and possibly already reducing their sway. While remedial strategies can be effective, we also need to be aware of and utilize compensatory techniques as well. These are strategies we can implement in our daily routine to compensate for the impairments in this system reduce our risk for falls. A few examples of this include using assisted devices, 
walkers, canes, walking sticks, because what you're doing is you're giving your body feedback so it's not solely relying on that somatosensory system. Another thing would be grab bars, the use of your environment, maybe leaning on the sink while you're doing things like washing the dishes or brushing your teeth, giving your body proprioceptive feedback around you to compensate for the weakness in that system. For some individuals, not everyone, but changing their footwear can be helpful to a flatter sole at the bottom, giving the brain more tactile input. For other individuals, some improve with balance-based torso weighting, proximally weighting the torso with something like a backpack or a weighted vest because you're giving your brain, once again, more sensory feedback. Other individuals may improve from ankle weights, and this is because by providing more pressure down, possibly could give more feedback up. Another possible intervention includes compression. Now, I have not personally encountered the research on this, but I'm including it because of testimonies. I've had some ladies report to me they feel more balanced with tight leggings on or another patient with an abdominal binder on. So I'm including this one because of the testimonies provided to me. And finally, a strategy my friend calls conditioned moving. This is where she finds herself moving her hips, even when standing in place, providing feedback to the brain by increasing the pressure underneath her feet. Those are a few of the compensatory strategies that may help with an impaired somatosensory system. A few educational warnings. First off, be aware of sensory preferences. If you have an impaired somatosensory system, you most likely rely on your visual system. So be aware that when that vision is removed, such as those dark environments, movie theaters, restaurants, be careful because you are at a high risk for falls when that system is removed and you're forced to rely on a weak somatosensory system. Number two, maintain fatigue awareness. Studies show that after plantar flexion fatigue, that's fatigue mostly in the calf muscles, the brain increases its reliance on the somatosensory input from the ankle and foot. So if you have weakness in this system and your brain is trying to rely more on it, it can increase your risk for falls. This is one of the reasons why people will tell me, after I exercise, I feel more off balance for the day. However, we need that muscle strength. So it's just something to be aware of plan our workouts according to our daily activities. I hope that you found this video educational and or insightful. And if you did, please press the like button below. I'd love it if you would subscribe, stay up to date notifications for my upcoming educational videos. Next, I'll be breaking down the vestibular and visual systems and talking about interventions for each one. Also check out the description below in which place I have resources and references for all of the above information. Also be sure to check out my personal custom exercise programs because together, little steps, we can make some big gains.